We don't have anyone in London right now. Mm -hmm. A bad time not to have anyone in London. He'll be great. He's a great choice. I'm sorry. Hal, and you didn't have to ask me. We've worked in different countries before. We're not talking about Hal. The president is asking you to serve as ambassador to the United Kingdom. It is an honor and a privilege. That's more like it. U.S. diplomat Kate Weiler receives a summons to the White House following the explosion of the HMS Courageous in the Persian Gulf near Iran. Due to the recent events, President Rayburn proposes that she becomes the ambassador to the UK. Unbeknownst to Kate, her name is also being considered for the position of vice president, known only to a select few individuals. Accompanied by her husband, Hal, who is a charismatic diplomat, Kate embarks on a trip to London, where they are granted accommodations at the prestigious Winfield House. Francis, the housekeeper at Winfield, finds Kate checking the sheets for a separate guest room and concludes that the couple is on the brink of a divorce since they do not share a bed. She communicates this to Stuart, Kate's deputy chief of mission, who then proceeds to confront Hal about the situation, as a divorce would not be suitable for a vice presidential candidate. Hal reassures Stuart and reveals that he knows about Kate's potential candidacy for the vice presidency, indicating that he is actively preparing her for the role. While in London, Kate silently listens to a tense phone call between President Rayburn and British Prime Minister Nicole Trowbridge, growing concerned about the president's aggressive rhetoric towards Iran. To her surprise, the UK Foreign Secretary, Austin Dennison, whisks her away for an impromptu meeting with the Prime Minister, raising suspicions that Hal may have exerted his influence to arrange the encounter. Later, Kate discovers that Hal has orchestrated a meeting with a controversial Tory operative, Meg Roylan, at a memorial event. This further solidifies her suspicions that this meeting was set up as a favor in return by Hal. Fearing the optics of such an encounter, Stuart quickly leads Kate into a police car and drives away with her before Meg can reach her. Wary of the potential consequences, Kate endeavors to convince the U.S. Secretary of State, Miguel Gannon, to curtail the president's media appearances, fearing that his unfiltered remarks may worsen the situation. She believes that yielding to the British government's desire to set the tone following the ship explosion is crucial. However, Kate uncovers Gannon's ulterior motives as she realizes that he is actively working to remove her from her role as ambassador. In a strategic move to fortify her position and safeguard her influence, Kate agrees to a high-profile photo shoot and interview with British Vogue. Through this opportunity, she seeks to shape her public image as a modern-day Cinderella, rendering it challenging for the Secretary of State to dismiss her. Kate and Hal embark on a carriage ride for the Vogue shoot. Before the photo shoot is completed, Hal gets into a car with a stylist whilst chatting about his clothes fitting but the stylist then presses a needle against his neck, sedating him as the car drives away from the Cinderella-themed scene. Hal wakes up to find himself handcuffed in a room. Meanwhile, the British Vogue crew searches frantically for him, eager to finalize their shoot. Amidst the chaos, Kate takes a moment to unwind, shedding her fancy dress and resting. Stuart soon approaches her with footage showing Hal getting into a car with his attractive stylist and driving away. Kate staunchly defends her husband's character, assuring Stuart that Hal has never been unfaithful. Worried that Hal might have been abducted, Kate instructs Stuart to inform the head of security. The atmosphere at Winfield House turns into turmoil, as everyone mobilizes to find any clue about Hal's disappearance. Unfazed by the situation, Hal is approached by his stylist and another man who hands him a cell phone. The man on the other end of the telephone introduces himself as Razul Shaheen, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iran. Shaheen explains that he lacks full support from the Iranian government to contact Hal, but it is imperative to prevent a diplomatic catastrophe. He instructs Hal to examine the pictures shown by his operative. The operative reveals himself to be an assassin and presents pictures of a retired U.S. Army general whom Iran had sanctioned him to assassinate. 
This retaliation was prompted by a U.S. Army drone strike that killed Quds Force Commander, General Qasem Soleimani. Minister Shaheen, however, called off the assassination to de-escalate tensions between the two countries, emphasizing that Iran was not responsible for the attack on the HMS Courageous. He warns that any subsequent attack on Iran would be met with an equal response. Hal is eventually returned to Winfield House, where he debriefs CIA Station Chief Idra Park in the presence of Stuart and Kate. He relays Shaheen's message and gives a USB to Idra, who assures them that she will conduct a thorough investigation before presenting the verified information to the State Department. Later that night, Kate confronts Hal, suspicious that he contacted Shaheen first. She reminds him of the illegality of such communication, given the absence of diplomatic ties between the U.S. and Iran. Hal repeatedly denies her suspicions, but Kate remains unconvinced, aware of her husband's capabilities. The following day, Kate implores Idra to diligently investigate the matter before reporting it as verified intelligence to the State Department. Her primary concern is to protect Hal and uphold the integrity of the intelligence report. Amidst the tension, Kate attends a funeral ceremony for the Royal Navy officers who recently lost their lives on the ship, with Prime Minister Trowbridge also scheduled to speak there. During the Prime Minister's speech, a grieving widow confronts him, claiming that he lacks the courage to acknowledge Iran as the perpetrator of the act of war. Seeking to console her, the Prime Minister publicly declares that he would make hellfire rain on Iran if they were found responsible. His remarks quickly go viral tragically triggering an Islamophobic incident the following morning, in which an Islamophobe drives a vehicle into a Muslim family outside a mosque while chanting anti-Iran slurs, leaving the parents dead and the children hospitalized. Unbeknownst to their colleagues, Stuart and Idra, who are in a secret relationship, receive news of the mosque attack while together. They rush to Winfield House, entering separately to conceal their relationship and inform Kate of the situation. Kate manages to persuade Idra to continue investigating, with a particular focus on Hal and his story. In an unexpected turn of events, they learn that the President of the United States is en route to London for a brief trip to show solidarity with the Prime Minister. Kate is deeply concerned about the optics of the US President and the UK Prime Minister standing together amid the rise in Islamophobic rhetoric. She realizes the potential for an unwanted escalation by Trowbridge, especially if Shaheen's claims are proven right. Determined to prevent a diplomatic crisis, she contacts a colleague in Iraq, who confirms a call made to Rome on a burner phone before Hal's abduction. Learning this, she storms the embassy and confronts Hal in her office, where he finally admits to delivering a message to Shaheen through a mutual contact in Italy, a country with diplomatic ties to Iran. Frustrated and upset with her husband's antics, Kate approaches her boss, Secretary of State Gannon, urging him to cancel the president's trip. She informs him of Iran's correspondence with Hal and the potential damage to the president's image if Iran's innocence claim holds weight. However, Gannon refuses, citing the advanced stage of the process and expressing regret that he wasn't informed earlier to provide assistance. Faced with this setback, Kate makes a last-ditch effort and meets with Foreign Secretary Denison. She reveals the intricacies of the conundrum she finds herself in, imploring Denison to persuade the Prime Minister to retract his comments on Iran. Denison, charmed by Kate's honesty, implies that the Prime Minister has become less influenced by him. He believes that only the President can convince Trowbridge to take back his remarks. With little time remaining before the President's arrival, a dejected Kate asks Hal to leave the country, emphasizing that his presence hinders her ability to provide objective counsel. In a desperate attempt to salvage their marriage, Hal reveals to Kate that she is being considered for the vice presidency, highlighting the impossibility of a divorce. Overwhelmed and apprehensive, Kate has no proper time to take in the news as President Rayburn arrives in his helicopter. At his arrival in Winfield House, the president is greeted by Hal and an overwhelmed Kate. They brief him about Iran's correspondence with Hal, and the president regrets not canceling the trip. Hal explains that the Secretary of State chose not to inform him, a reasonable call, according to Kate. They convince the president to attempt to influence Prime Minister Trowbridge to soften his anti-Iran stance, given the uncertainty surrounding the attack on HMS Courageous. 
Kate and Dennison then plan the meeting details of their leaders, with Kate emphasizing that their privacy must be respected. Once the president and PM begin their dinner, Hal suggests to Billy, the White House chief of staff, to begin discussing the vice presidency with Kate. Due to a scandal involving the current VP's husband, the VP may be forced to step down. Billy believes Kate is the best choice as other candidates might use the position for their own personal goals. Kate is shocked by the secrecy and goes for some fresh air. Sometime after, Kate meets Idra, who reveals the shared intelligence networks between the US and the UK, and if Kate requested intelligence from a colleague in Iraq. Kate explains the circumstances around Hal and Shaheen's encounter, with Hal reaching out to him first, concluding that the mistrust between her and Hal is the cause of the confusion. This leads to the duo ambushing Hal in the residence and having him write up the entire story of the Polisite meeting with Iran so as to make his story become ironclad. After the meal, Rayburn announces to send aid to the sinking HMS Courageous. Kate confronts Dennison for not informing her earlier that the ship is sinking, with Dennison explaining that Trowbridge lied to involve the U.S. in the conflict, making it appear as if the U.S. backs Trowbridge's anti-Iran rhetoric. With Kate's help, Dennison hopes he will be able to put a stop to the advance of the carrier group. Kate soon informs Billy about Dennison's revelation. Realizing the potential blowback, Billy suggests contacting Shaheen for confirmation, but Kate worries for his safety and proposes that they move forward with the information that they already have. Billy, charmed by Kate's conviction, discusses the VP nomination further, and Kate becomes more open to the idea. Kate then argues with Hal, realizing he lied about agreeing to a divorce and knowing about the VP nomination. They brawl, with Kate attacking him relentlessly. Kate then heads over to the president, informing him about Trowbridge's deceit and urges him to halt the carrier group. Frustrated with Hal and the VP situation, she offers her resignation. Impressed by her charisma, the president refuses and suggests she would be a good fit for the VP slot before taking off in his helicopter. The next morning, Idra informs Kate that the British embassy in Iran is being evacuated and an advisory is being issued to British nationals to leave the country. Kate realizes that the situation demands action and must not be allowed to spin further out of control. She decides to contact the Iranians, concluding that their intelligence must be the key to finding the real perpetrators of the attack. She has her people plant hidden messages in U.S. trade releases that the Iranians follow closely, inviting conversation with them. Meanwhile, heeding Kate's advice, Rayburn reneges on his promise to send a fleet to Britain's aid, upon the Prime Minister's plea. This enrages the Prime Minister, who is feeding off the media frenzy with Iran, and he announces Rayburn's betrayal to the public at a gala meant to solidify trade relations between the UK and the US. All the while, Stuart grows closer to Kate and counsels her on her decision to reject the vice presidency, addressing her problems with Hal and offering possible solutions to her in this regard. The Iranians then respond to the hidden messages by having one of their ministers go on a Twitter rant, calling out British Foreign Policy Secretary Dennison and claiming that he has summoned the Iranian ambassador. Realizing that no one has summoned the ambassador and that the rant is Iran's response to the message, she urges Dennison to summon Iranian ambassador Parham Najjar to receive intel. Taking Idra's advice, she presses on Dennison the importance of herself being in the room for the debriefing of the Iranian ambassador. Ambassador Najjar soon arrives at Whitehall and meets with Dennison and Kate, revealing that Russian mercenaries are behind the attack on the British aircraft carrier. He secretly writes the name of Roman Lenkov, the leader of a Russian mercenary group, on a piece of paper, before burning it to destroy the evidence. Najjar appears distressed that the Russians, an ally to Iran, will find out that he was the source of this information falling into the hands of the UK and the US. Unexpectedly, he collapses and dies on the spot. Kate advises Dennison to have the medical team declare that Najjar died on his way to the hospital, anywhere away from Whitehall, so as not to give voice to any rumors such as the British poisoning the Iranian ambassador. She then instructs Idra to feed this new piece of information about the Russians into the intelligence loop without making it seem like the Iranians have exposed it. Following up on this, Idra provides the intel to a Romanian acquaintance to forge it into the intelligence loop. As she then finally returns home, Kate makes a subtle gesture to Hal, 
and both of them proceed to spend the night together, sharing a bed for the first time since they landed in the UK. The next morning, the Wylers discuss their intimacy from the previous night and agree that it does not change anything between them. They still intend to get a divorce. A meeting is then scheduled between the British and American delegations at Shevning House. Their agenda is to discuss their policy on Russia, Iran, and their relationship with each other. The following day, Secretary of State Gannon is expected to arrive to finalize these discussions with UK Foreign Secretary Denison. While en route to Shevning House, Stewart briefs Kate and Hal on the agenda and also conveys the State Department's instruction not to apologize to Iran. The delegations are gathered at the table, and Denison suggests focusing on developing a response to Iran first. Denison expresses his desire to issue an apology to Iran, revealing new intelligence that suggests Russia may be behind the attack on the HMS Courageous. Later, during a break, he admits to Kate that they prioritize discussions about Iran because the UK no longer perceives its alliance with America as beneficial. This change is due to President Rayburn's decision to renege on deploying the carrier group to the Persian Gulf. Kate is furious at this revelation, and tensions rise as they are informed that Prime Minister Trowbridge will be joining their meeting. Trowbridge arrives in a luxurious car and immediately demands a briefing on the delegation's plans regarding Russia. Dissatisfied with the ambassador's and foreign secretary's responses, he decides to stay and assist the delegation's efforts to formulate a response to Russia. Meanwhile, Hal is given a tour of the grounds at Shevning House by Cecilia Denison, the sister of the foreign secretary. They share chemistry, but Hal remains committed to his wife Kate and consciously refrains from exerting influence on her work. Back inside the house, the prime minister interrogates everyone unsatisfied with the options presented regarding Russia. The delegations are cautious about their response to a potentially volatile nuclear state, as it is uncertain if Russia sanctioned the attack or if Lenkov is working with someone else. Trowbridge firmly believes that no diplomatic strategies will be effective against the Russians, citing their invasion of Ukraine as evidence. Insisting on a military-oriented solution, Kate contacts the Department of Defense and obtains a list of Russian targets for a retaliatory strike that they consider viable. She presents these options to Trowbridge, surprising everyone, particularly Denison, who is compelled to seek Kate's assistance. Kate confides in Hal about feeling out of place and uncertain about presenting military options to the Prime Minister without consulting Denison. Hal supports her and leads her to the pantry where they unexpectedly find P.M. Trowbridge. The three share drinks, and their conversation prompts Trowbridge to reconsider his approach to Russia. He gives them a chance to come up with a diplomatic strategy for the talks with Secretary of State Gannon the following day. Determined to succeed, Kate asks Hal to work with her. Stewart sets up a temporary office in the Weiler's bedroom, while Kate goes to Denison's room to apologize and seek his help in forming a satisfactory Russia policy for Trowbridge. Kate's tipsy state makes it difficult for her to get to the point, but she emphasizes their need to work together toward a larger goal. Meanwhile, Stewart visits Idra, hoping for intel on Russian involvement in the attack on the warship. While she doesn't have the answer, Idra reveals that Russian submarines are eavesdropping in nearby waters. Working through the night, the Wylers and Denison create a policy they believe will convince Trowbridge to avoid a military confrontation with Russia. Kate convinces Denison to present their idea to the Prime Minister, a plan to freeze the assets of select Russians in London and crown dependencies, putting financial pressure on key individuals and creating tension in the Kremlin. However, Trowbridge immediately disagrees suggesting an attack on Russian troops in Syria instead. Kate suspects someone has influenced him, and Kate discusses her suspicions with Hal, who introduces her to Denison's sister, Cecilia. She reveals that Trowbridge must have secretly met with Meg Roiland, the controversial woman whom Kate almost met and a former campaign manager with influence over Trowbridge. Kate realizes she needs to meet with Roiland to convince Trowbridge to accept a diplomatic solution. Denison forbids the meeting, but with Cecilia's help, Kate sneaks out to meet Roiland while Hal goes to the airport to receive Gannon. Roiland explains to Kate that Trowbridge fears the dismemberment of the United Kingdom under his watch, as Scotland and Northern Ireland plan independence referendums. 
To prevent this, he seeks a military conflict to unite the kingdom. Together, Kate and Roiland devise a plan to target Lenkov's troops in Libya as a better solution. Kate presents the plan to Gannon while Denison works on Trowbridge. Although Trowbridge agrees, Gannon initially refuses. Using the ace up her sleeve, Kate leverages her VP candidacy upon Hal's suggestion and pressures the White House to intervene until Gannon relents. The Wylers celebrate the successful negotiations, and Hal admits that taking a back seat is growing on him. Meanwhile, Stuart and Idra contemplate taking their relationship public, but ultimately decide against it, until the situation with Russia is resolved. Russian Ambassador Oleg Bolokin is then summoned to Whitehall by the Allies to inform him of the impending military action against Lenkov's troops in Libya. While meeting with Kate, Bolokin secretly hands her instructions to leave the room via a back door and meet with someone as he rants about Russia being independent of Lenkov's group. Making it appear as if he's lecturing Kate, Kate follows his instructions and is met by a Russian operative who provides her with Lenkov's location. Once she returns to the room via the same back door, Ambassador Balakin wraps up his speech and leaves. Kate informs Stuart and Idra about the intel on Lenkov and they all conclude that Russia wants them to capture Lenkov as they were not responsible for his actions, and only Lenkov could reveal who ordered him to attack the HMS Courageous. Meanwhile, Hal receives a summons from the embassy. He is met by Chief of Staff Billy via video conference, who discloses to Hal that the president intends to fire Gannon as Secretary of State. Hal immediately informs Kate of this, and she believes she is responsible for her boss getting fired. Later, Hal has dinner with an old friend working at the embassy, who suggests the idea of Hal replacing Gannon as Secretary of State. Sometime later, Idra urges Kate to deliver Russia's message to the White House personally to ensure that the Russians know their statement is being taken seriously, while she will inform the State Department and her British counterparts about the situation. Upon reaching the White House, Kate is ushered into the Oval Office with 90 people present to brief the president. Gannon overshadows her and barely allows her to speak. Nevertheless, the course is set, and the U.S. plans to contact France to arrange a military operation aimed at capturing Lenkov. Before returning to Winfield House, Kate is approached by a colleague she worked with in Afghanistan, who explains that since Kate got reassigned, the situation in Kabul has descended into chaos. Upon returning to London, Kate is reprimanded by the Prime Minister, who is furious that the U.S. made him retract his vow to help Libya just 12 minutes after he had promised his support to save them from Lenkov's mercenary troops. Exhausted and overwhelmed by the day's events, Kate sits on her bed crying, with Hal silently listening on the other end of the bed. The following morning, Kate meets with Denison to inform him in person of the change in plans and to strategize regarding coordination with France in the capture of Lenkov. Denison informs Kate that Trowbridge has suddenly become more open to the idea overnight and wishes for Denison and Gannon to meet with France's interior minister, Brielle Fournier. Later, Gannon and the others make adjustments to the arrangements, and Kate is tasked with going to Paris with Denison. Upon arrival, they are to meet with the interior minister and are later scheduled to attend a ball at the prestigious Louvre Museum in case the initial meeting proves unsuccessful. Trowbridge insists that the military operation be carried out by British special forces, as it would provide a great photo op that would boost his popularity. Convincing France to agree to this will be challenging due to the strained relationship between France and the UK, stemming from the recent Brexit campaign and the UK's separation from the European Union. Meanwhile, Idris submits a request to the White House Chief of Staff, Billy, to utilize Howell as an asset for the agency, as he was friends with a suspected Saudi operative working within the embassy. However, Billy declines the request and tells her to approach Stuart to learn about Kate's career plans. Idra then asks Stuart, who reveals that he is preparing Kate for the vice presidency, also informing her that should Kate assume the position of vice president of the United States, Stuart would have to move to Washington with her for four months. Shocked by Stuart's withheld information, Idra ends their relationship, leaving Stuart confused. Later, Kate invites Hal to join her on the trip to Paris, but he refuses, stating that he would have nothing substantial to contribute there. 
Worried about his boredom leading to reckless behavior, Kate asks Hal to give a speech on her behalf at the prestigious Chatham House. Initially hesitant, Hal eventually agrees. Stuart suspects that Hal has ulterior motives, especially after he sends a copy of his speech to Billy. Fearing a power play by Hal, Stuart informs Kate, who assures Stuart that she has given Hal her blessing to proceed. Kate and Dennison then depart for France. Upon their arrival, they attempt to convince Minister Brielle to authorize the operation involving British troops on French soil. As expected, the answer is no. Still insistent, Dennison and Kate retreat to a restaurant for lunch, where they strategize on how to secure Brielle's approval at the ball scheduled for later that night. Back in London, Hal's speech at Chatham House receives resounding applause. After his speech, he is congratulated by a Tory operative who invites him to dinner, claiming to possess vital information to share. Hal offers to connect him with the White House, even though he is not officially tasked with a diplomatic mission in the UK. Merritt Grove, the Tory operative, refuses, insisting on sharing the information exclusively with Hal. Hal calls Kate and informs her of the situation. Upon learning that Hal offered to connect Merritt to the White House, Kate suspects that Hal is vying for the position of Secretary of State, fueling her anger. Later, she confesses to Dennison that her marriage is once again in trouble, considering this the final straw. She quickly assigns Stuart the task of keeping Hal in check until her return. Clad in a stunning red dress, she arrives at the Louvre for the ball and meets with Minister Brielle. Shockingly, Brielle reveals that according to her intelligence reports, the British were planning to assassinate Lenkov. Back in London, Stuart and Hal attempt to approach Merritt as he prepares to leave in his car, when suddenly, the vehicle explodes with Merritt Grove. Stressed out due to the information provided to her by Brielle, Kate storms out of the event, with Dennison following closely. Suddenly, she realizes that the only person benefiting from Lenkov's death is the one who hired him. Connecting the dots, she concludes that Trowbridge must be the one who had hired Lenkov and then ordered his assassination to cover up his involvement and the truth. As Kate finishes this thought with Dennison's contribution, they find themselves suddenly surrounded by French police who inform them about the explosion in London. Listen to me. A dead Lenkov is only good for the people who hired him. A dead Lenkov is only good for the people who hired him. If Prime Minister Nicol Trowbridge wants him dead... Nicol Trowbridge hired him. 